1961 Pontiac Catalina? Yes, and this car takes off like a Rolls Royce. No, not that type of Rolls Royce, this type of Rolls Royce. And that's because up front, tucked between those fenders, is a 421 cubic inch Super Duty V8. No need for any Viagra tonight, Pontiac fans. You're welcome. And sure, this technically is not a pure stock car because you could not get the 421 Super Duty in a Catalina from the factory in 1961. But if you knew the right people, you could purchase one over the counter late in the year from your local Pontiac dealership. So in reality, this car is here to test and tune, but we still get to see it run, so hell yeah. That Super Duty isn't some simple 389 that's been massaged a little bit. This thing was a completely different monster. We're talking four bolt mains, forged internals, a solid lifter cam, an aluminum intake manifold, two Carter four barrel carburetors sitting on top, and you could even get high capacity aluminum exhaust manifolds, but they were known to melt under intense hot lapping, so not too many people got them. Compression ratio was 11 to one, and these monsters for 1961 were rated 373 horsepower and 425 pound-feet of torque. However, Motor Trend tested one of these cars and they said, uh-uh, this thing's actually making 465 horsepower and 505 pound-feet of torque. Inside, you'll find a four-speed manual transmission, so let's just have a moment of silence for those rear tires. Those poor little guys, they never had a chance. If you had a 61 Catalina with a 421 Super Duty, out back you probably had a set of 430 gears. This one, however, is a little more conservative. We're looking at 410 gears. Since this Catalina was not technically part of the pure stock event, they did not have an official weigh-in, but curb weight would be about 3,800 pounds. There's a reason that you don't see many 421 Super Duty engines from 1961, and that was the cost. That year, a Catalina started at 2,750 bucks. Adjusting for inflation, that's about $26,442. Then if you were able to actually find one of those Super Duty engines, they were $2,250, and adjusting for inflation, that's $21,634 today. National Dragster Magazine wrote about one of these Catalina 421 Super Duties in August of 1961. It was a Mickey Thompson-sponsored car, and it ran the quarter mile in 13.14 seconds at 111 miles per hour. Let's check out its opponent. 1973 Pontiac Firebird Formula. And Pontiac fans, before I give you this next piece of information, please look around and make sure that you are not near any children. This car is a Super Duty 455. Hell yes. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know very much about Pontiacs, you might be thinking, well, who cares? It was 1973, so it can't have that much power. And sure, the Super Duty 455 only had a compression ratio of 8.4 to 1, but Pontiac said, you know what? We think we can still make that work. They threw in four bolt mains, forged rods and pistons, an aggressive cam, high flow round port heads, and a 800 CFM Quadrajet. You may have also noticed the special shaker hood that did come from the factory in the formula cars with the SD455, and yeah, it had a blocking plate, but with a little bit of time, you could remove that and it would function just perfectly. With all those goodies piled together, that engine was putting out 290 net horsepower and 395 pound-feet of net torque. And if you don't understand the difference between net ratings and gross ratings, will then learn to use Google. Automatic transmissions were most common in these cars because they were available at no extra cost and they were actually mandated when you had air conditioning. But good gravy, this one's got a four-speed manual. Mmm, delicious. Ow. 342 gears would have been standard, but this one has a nice little upgrade and now has a set of 373 gears. By this point, the Firebird wasn't really the lightest car, and this one with driver was 3,894 pounds. The Super Duty formula was a pretty good deal, but as you'll find, they didn't sell that many. The base formula started at $3,276. Safety track rear was 45 bucks. Regardless of the transmission that you chose, that was $236. 
and the Super Duty 455 V8 was $675. And that might not sound like much, but keep in mind to upgrade to the 400, it was only 100 bucks. That gives you an absolute cheapest total of $4,232. And adjusting for inflation, that'd be about $27,403 today. As I'd mentioned, these cars are fairly rare. There were only 43 total produced that year. And when you break that down into those equipped with a four-speed manual, there were 10. 10 total produced. Car and Driver Magazine tested a Super Duty equipped Firebird in May of 1973. With an automatic transmission, it ran the quarter mile in 13.75 seconds at 103 miles per hour. Keep in mind, this was 1973. Those are extremely impressive numbers for any year from the muscle car era. But you know what? We should check out what it'll do today. Ken Rival in a 6 to 1 Catalina 421 4 speed car, 10 First round, the Firebird takes home a commanding win, running 12.84 seconds at 111.55 miles per hour. But if we had to award a winner based on pure sound alone, I'm giving that one to the Catalina, who screamed through the quarter mile in 13.32 seconds at 106.91 miles per hour. Let's check out the second round. Chuck Lombardi, Cumberland, Rhode Island, 73 Firebird SD 455, up against Ken Rival out of Warren, 61. Second round, the Firebird again takes home the win, running an even quicker 12.71 seconds at 111.78 miles per hour. And in the other lane, the Catalina might not have won the race, but it sure sounded good when it was crossing the finish line in 13.40 seconds at 106.18 miles per hour. Pretty darn impressive for a car that size. A huge thanks to both of the owners for bringing out these cars. It was absolutely awesome seeing them on the drag strip. I'll catch you guys at the next one.